horror nerds i'm so excited to show you what is right here now this is from outlaw hobbies i am so freaking excited to finally add this uh young actress to my freaking collection this is probably one of the coolest people you're about to find out who i have in my collection i'm trying to get the father i already have the mother i'm trying to get the father so here we go so this um she put a bunch of them on the website uh she put her down as on black widow um and she signed her and she signed on that um and like the young natasha romanoff and then she signed on the peter pan one which is her her role was wendy didn't care for that um, but when I saw that she got her on some Resident Evil photos, I jumped on that shit real fast. So this is about 95 Canadian. I was so fucking pumped. It was a little pricey, I would say. But I mean, again, this is the daughter of two fucking huge people. Um, the mother is a well-known actress for sure. Um, and freaking the dad is a very famous director, which I'm trying to get. So here we go. It is an 8 by 10 and it is ACUA, sorry, ACUA certified and ba bam If you don't know who this is, you guys, I'm about to tell you right now. So this is right here. This is the autograph. It's fine. It's under big scroll. This is signed by Mila Yogovich's and Paul W.S. Anderson's daughter, Ever Anderson. I was fucking, this is huge, you guys. Like, it's like she's become like a little actress herself. She's had like some big big like roles she had some big roles that she was starring in um but they're not like huge major roles but i i this this little lady right here is gonna grow up to something big you wait because like her two parents are like famous you guys um so uh ever anderson so she played alicia marcus um it's spelled my name is alicia but it's called it's pronounced in the movie alicia marcus she played uh, alicia marcus slash the red queen in the final chapter which is what she currently signed on um she basically was like the red queen so obviously if you know what the red queen is like she was like a homicidal bitch in like the first one she was because like um antivirus kid the t-virus um the the T virus broke in the facility and then um the red queen like in the very first one um introduced to the series um it shut down she locked and killed everybody alive because like she thought that's what she was doing when she was making everything good or whatever but she rose and she just went crazy and started killing innocent people who weren't even infected um but then in this one um the final final chapter she was actually um a little nicer um but it was really nice to see mom and daughter on the big screen talking to each other because all she was was a was a hologram of her and it was really cool it was so cool to see it and like mother and daughter and it was pretty fucking sick um but yeah so again so she was also played in black widow so she had uh she was young natasha romanoff um she did sign a couple of those um i was contemplating on getting her on the black widow because i really liked how she she um, empowered Natasha Romanoff where she was like kind of like the stronger version of her where she was defending her uh, baby sister Yelena um, but I really technically really wanted her on um, on uh, the Resident Evil one it's really fucking sick like look at her and have you guys noticed if you guys Wikipedia or Google Google her her fucking both of her daughters are literally a spitting image of Mila sorry Mila Jogovic it's freaking crazy you guys like it's nuts like I don't think he, she even looks anything like like she has the father's features for sure but like literally doesn't even look like him like it, it's like literally a spitting image walking bomb like of a like a mini Mila Jogovic it's so cool so I do have Mila Jogovic downstairs on two autographs um which is really sick I, I do partake in the celebrity authentics one <clears throat> which I ended up getting her to write um Alice which was nice I paid the extra subscription for it inscription for it sorry um, and then I have another one where she just signed, but I paid some money for it because I wanted to add her to my collection. So that was pretty sweet. Um, I have been wanting to get Paul W. Sanderson as one of my directors, but nobody has unfortunately got him. Um, but if anybody does get him, please, I, I really need him for my collection. Um, if you guys don't know, fun fact that Mila Jogovic, um fell in love with Paul W. Sanderson, who is the maker and the writer and director of all of the Resident Evil movies. Say what you want about the films. I love them personally, because again, I'm a Resident Evil nerd. I know most people didn't like them, but they, they, they've been pretty much ride or die ever since. And, and I'm surprised they've never split up. 
I know one of the major people out there who split up was Kate Beckinsale and Len Wiseman, who were um, uh, husband and wife and fell in love on the set of Underworld. If you guys don't know who that is, that's Celine. So yeah, but they, they ended up breaking up, et cetera, et cetera. But these people have been together for a bit now, so it's really fucking cool. So yeah, um, if you guys haven't seen the movies, watch them. Um, I know people, Alice has nothing to do with the, with the, with the movies, sorry, with the games. Um, they, what they did was they basically, um, brought a lot of the beloved monsters from the games. And I know Paul W. Sanderson has played it. I don't think Mila Jogovic has played it. I think she started getting into the games to kind of understand it, but she, her character has nothing to do, like I said, with the series. Um, but they did bring like the characters like Jill Valentine, Leon S. Kennedy, Barry Burton, they brought those on the, right, like, from the books into, the, like, you know, the books, the movies, the games, you know, into the thing. It was really nice to see that. Um, but it was really sad that it ended because I think when Resident Evil 7 was being released, I believe, I think that was the timeline, um, uh, th this was the last movie. And it was really sad because I think Resident Evil 8 was was the next one that was coming out and it's already out and I think that they could have brought and incorporated some of the cool monsters that that Capcom has released recently in RE8 and they could have maybe did something with like Ethan Winters or whatever but I don't think anybody's going to revamp or do the franchise I know there was talks about it and I know that it was like a big slap in the face to like Mila Jogovic because she's done such a good job um, but yeah, I don't know why people hate her. I don't, I think it's like a huge thing. I think a lot of people didn't like, um, they just didn't like it. I don't know for what for. I think the CGI was pretty fucking sick. Um, I would say my, my favorite Resident Evil one would have to be, um, would have to be the very first one with the mansion and the hive. That was my very, like, that was my favorite one. Um, and then I will say the last, um, oh no. There's so many <laughs> apocalypse apocalypse is really good too that was all shot in toronto and in hamilton which was really sick i was so mad my dad actually said that that like um uh he saw them like shooting it or whatever um i guess he was on his way home from work but they shot it down in the downtown hamilton scene and i realized that was the pizza pizza um and then i was so pissed i was like wow that's so like that's so crazy um, but yeah, so I will say Apocalypse is my second one because that has to do more with the nemesis. The third one was okay because it has to do with like the desert. Um, and then number four with all the clones, that was really sick. Uh, and then they brought like Wesker in it. And then number five, Retrib Retribution. Retribution was really good. I really liked that. Um, and then this one, this one was like, I would say is like my next favorite one. I don't know. I kind of like them all, but they have like their own different things. <clears throat> but yeah, if you, if you watch this, it had to do with more of her. Because um, I will spoil it for you. I'm not going to go into it a whole, a whole lot. But Alice Abernathy, which is her, that like you won't know Alice Abernathy's last name because you have to read the books. But Alice Abernathy um, is basically a clone. She was nothing but more than a clone. And then if you see Alice, Alice goes through like the different stages that you think she's like a normal human being, right? Who just has all these like superhuman powers and abilities. And she just, and, and yes, she, it's true. She was trained and was had like the spec ops like training and stuff like that and then she gets superhuman powers from like um wesker and stuff like that and then wesker takes them away yes she has those abilities but the thing is the sad part about the realization is that alice alice is, was programmed um by alicia marcus which is her which is a smaller version of her but alicia marcus got sick um, and it had to do with like the whole hive and like Wesker and stuff that yep, I, I just a little bit jogging my memory. Um, and then she made, she made a creation. She downloaded it basically all of her memories as, as like a, a small little girl going into being like, uh, like an adult because she knew she was going to get sick and she had this disease. That's why the T virus, uh, uh, blended in with her, um, with her cells and, and made her able to walk and talk and stuff. And then like, she had to do something with like programming and screening her image and creating Alice and, and Alice turned out everything that she wanted to be as if what she saw in herself, if that makes any sense. I know that's like a little bit of a, like a, like a little brain puzzle, but Alice, it was really sad because like Alice was actually just, like, I always thought Alice was like, like, a, like one of my favorite characters. Like I just, it just, it just, it was like mind blowing to the fact that Alice was, is just a clone. Like she was a robot and it was really sad that like, but at the ending of the movie, you didn't know if she was going to die or not because what she had to do was drop the virus that into the air that would kill everything basically, like all the undead. 
and and they didn't know if Alice was going to survive. Um, and then if you see it, Alice does survive and she does wake up, which is really nice. Um, and I remember crying buckets and buckets of tears because like Alice was like one of my favorite characters, like I said, and they brought back Claire Redfield, which is really nice. Um, I know, I don't think Jill Valentine made it or whatever, but a lot of the, half the cast didn't make it because I, I don't know if they didn't really speculate what happened to them. Um, but yeah, so she ended up making it, but she basically ended up finding out that like, like she was a clone and she was being used and abused a little bit, but she got to have the childhood memories because Alice couldn't understand why she had no memory or, uh, or like of anything in her whole life. So it was a nice gift that Alicia Marcus gave her. But yeah, so then the, then that was it. Like that's how the, how the series ended. She basically just went on and, and they had to rebuild humanity from the ground up because everybody was dead. Right. So yeah, so that's it. That's the big, that's the big, um, that's the big ending of the movie. So tell me what you guys think. Are you guys a fan of the books? Have you guys read the books? Have you guys read the, have you, do you guys like the games or do you guys like the movies or do you like all three? I personally like all three. I have no problem with the series. I think it's a really good series and Capcom. I'm really excited to see, um, if there's speculation of RE9 coming out, um, or there's going to be the remake of RE5, which they teased in RE4 at the end of the remake, or they're going to bring, um, Code Veronica remake because a lot of people want that. And I know a lot of people want the Outbreak um, video games, which have nothing to do with the series, by the way. Um, they want people to, to revamp and remake the out, out, Outbreak series. So yeah, but Capcom, the cool thing about Capcom is, is that they can, um, they can do six projects at once and I've already completed three and they'll, re they'll release them and they'll still work on them like all the other ones. That's the cool thing about, I appreciate this company so much is yes, they're so they're worth millions and billions of dollars and they create really cool things, but they don't create trash. It, like, and that's the cool thing about, that's why I, I appreciate Capcom so much. So leave a like, leave a comment and tell me what you guys think. Ciao for now.